In the UK today, there are 12,000 out gay families and the number is rising fast. There is a greater visibility of gay families now in the UK than there were possibly five, even 10, even 15 years ago. But gay families are not a new phenomenon. I think it's also much easier now to start a family. Adoption agencies are actively encouraging gay parents to come forward. And that's been hugely influential in culture change in, in the UK. And also people are starting their families rather than inheriting families. So I think there has always been gay families in the UK. But what we are seeing now is a greater level of acceptance, greater level of visibility, and more opportunities to create those families. With gay marriage now legal, many same-sex couples are increasingly looking to start their own families. So what choices are open to gay families in the UK today? It's Saturday morning at London's annual Alternative Parenting Show, and it's already filling up with prospective parents eager to find out what's on offer. The show is the brainchild of Linda Riley, who had twins six years ago with her partner, Sarah Garrett. The Alternative Parenting Show we started a few years ago because so many people are asking us uh, how, we, how we became gay parents. I know a lot of gay parents and I know a lot of gay groups, but that's because it's in my world. But I know there are a lot of people that are very, very isolated. They don't have a support base and they are just so happy to be talking to other gay parents. If there was a show around like this, when Sarah and I were thinking of becoming parents, it just would have been fantastic. Because we'd gone through the process of having kids ourselves, we sort of knew there was like, you know, there's so many minefields um, that you have to go through. There's so many different hurdles. So we were like, oh, let's start a show that actually gives people access to information. And there wasn't that opportunity when we were first like embarking on it. You know, the legal hurdles and, you know, whether it's co-parenting, adoption, where the non-biological parent stands, you know, and even like how to choose a school. The ambassadors for the Alternative Parenting Show are well-known TV actor Charlie Condu and film actress Sophie Ward, both of whom are gay parents. It's great to have them on board. They mingle, they talk with everybody. Charlie's uh, children are quite young, they're toddlers, and Sophie's children uh, are more grown up. Most people now accept that having gay parents doesn't make you bad parents, that the children aren't any more likely to have a difficult childhood. Um, I'm hoping that in the future, the new families that are being created and are being brought up with love are totally integrated into our ideas and perceptions of what it is to have a family. Things are changing and, and hopefully in the future it, it won't be such a big deal about whether you're gay or not. I'm an ambassador for the Alternative Parenting Show because I think it's really important that people recognise there are families like ours out there. I don't feel any pressure to be a role model uh, for other gay parents, but I'm certainly pleased that I'm talking about it publicly. Because when I was growing up, there were no role models. There was nobody doing what I've done. And I, it was one of the big things when I came out that I worried that I wouldn't be a parent. And I knew I wanted to be a parent and I didn't know how to go about it. So I feel it's really important for me to talk about this as much as I can so that other young gay people realise that it is a possibility and something that doesn't necessarily have to be closed to them. Linda and Sarah's daughters are now six years old. I co-parent with my ex-partner Sarah. Uh, we share custody, we have set days, and uh, we get along very, very well, so very lucky. When Sarah and I decided to have a family, we looked into all the different options, um, and we decided to go for IVF. I tried to be the biological mother, but that didn't work, and then Sarah is the biological mother. I've always wanted children. It was when I was single, I was looking into adoption and that process, and I sort of went quite far on within the adoption process. It wasn't until I met Linda and that we we sort of 
became the natural progression to sort of look into different ways of like having a family together. For the first six months there I was trying, there was a, a book and you could choose your donor. The donors were anonymous and they didn't have anything to do with the children. But when the law changed and they had to tick a box and it meant that when the children were 18, they could find each other through the donor registry. Well, all the donors pulled out. Overnight, it went from this uh, massive book of choice of your donors uh, to two donors. Before, you know, we were talking about sort of using a known donor, but um, like Linda would rather have gone for an anonymous donor to make her more involved. At school uh, is the place where we're the only gay family because socially we've got a big gay network. Um, at school is the place where we find the most difficulty. I experience a lot of what I call passive homophobia. Uh, very few parents talk to me. It's almost you feel paranoid saying this, but people whispering or they're saying to the new parent, that's the gay parent and stuff. But I don't get involved in it all, but you just know it's all going on. I think it takes courage to be a parent because of you, like from when they're born, you have to almost out yourself all the time. The way the public perceives parenting, gay parenting, is almost 10 years behind how accepting they are of gay people. I made a real effort at the school gates to just chat to the parents. And if, do you know what? If, if you go up to them and you like, oh, what are you doing for half term? Or just, you know, you've got something in common and you just talk to them, they are going to go, oh, you're not an alien just because you're a gay person. The London Women's Clinic, who helped Linda and Sarah conceive, are now a regular fixture at the show. We've been here for the last four years at the Alternative Parenting Show, and it is such a lovely atmosphere, it really is. Um, the people tend to come through the doors very hopeful, maybe a bit wide-eyed, but very optimistic, and um, just wanting to know what their options are. Jim and Pete from Essex have been together for three years. Jim works for RBS in international banking, and Pete is an office manager at the NSPCC. When we first got together, we both discussed did we want kids in the future, and we, straight away I think we agreed that we did. Yeah, we knew from that. Um, but obviously as guys, you know, there's, there's no womb, so what do we do? We mainly discussed adoption because it seems like the obvious choice, and that way we'd both be kind of equal parents, but um, we've come in today so we can find out what other options are available because we really don't know. The healthier the egg donor is, the healthier your gestation carrier is, the healthier your children are gonna be. And for us, that's what's important because this is an incredible journey that's gonna end up giving you children and so the way I always think about it is, you know, would I want my child being carried by this particular surrogate? Would I want my child coming, you know, the eggs coming from this particular donor? Okay, so we've heard this can be quite an expensive process. Can you just give us like, you know, ballpark figures? Yeah. If you're using an egg donor and a surrogate, you're right, it can be expensive. Somewhere around maybe even 80 to 100,000 pounds. Okay. That's sort of the, the budget that most people will be looking at. Two dads who found surrogacy worked for them are Yorgos and Sasha. I'm Sasha, this is Yorgos, this is Emily and Anthea. They are 15 months. We are the Erifiadi family. I was thinking about having kids since I was about uh, 30 years old. I was in a long relationship and we were talking a bit about kids and that relationship fell through. At some point I decided that if I want to have kids I may as well have it by myself. And then if I meet someone on the way, it's going to be a plus. I found myself working in Ukraine where there are four or five surrogate clinics of good quality. And then I met Sasha. And I told him, uh, Sasha, I, I want to be a parent. I want you to know that. And if you want to just say, no, I'm not ready for that, it's fine. If you want to just uh, stick around, that's also fine. I mean, I'm not young anymore. <laughs> I have to say that Sasha at the time, he was 21, so very young. So he said yes, and he helped me a lot. 
My name is Yorgos He was saying that he wanted to have kids in the future. For me, it was like, it was fine. But you know, when you're young, you can say that, it, it's fine. But it, when it's in reality, it's completely different. It changed a lot my life. I wouldn't say like it's a bad way, because babies bring you a lot of happiness. In Ukraine, it's, it's very different from how it works in the UK. In, in Ukraine, you want the egg donor to be someone young and healthy because it's the quality of the eggs. But you want the surrogate to be someone who's already a parent and, and maybe a bit more um, mature, uh, someone who will stay at home and there's less risk of, of doing something stupid that has an impact on the pregnancy. And I think that's also what's important is that in Ukraine, they don't let you get in touch with the egg donor or they don't let you get in touch with the surrogate. If, if the kids uh, at some point will ask about the mother, the biological mother, I think in our case, I won't be, I mean, I don't even know who the person is. I have a name, I have a picture. I will choose to be honest and tell them, you know, this is how it happened. I can't provide you with any information. Uh, I can give you any little information that I have. I can show you a picture. I can give you the name of the clinic and if you want to travel in Ukraine and try your luck, uh, I mean, that's up to you, but I hope that it won't get that far. I think I read about five books while we were expecting the, the babies and I even Sasa at some point he was telling me why do you need to read these books and uh, I took it really, really seriously. Uh, and too even serious. Too seriously, yeah. <laughs> and even when the babies arrived, uh, I took it as a project. The whole getting them into a routine at the beginning was difficult with Sasha. It was quite a lot because he was build, building like the main routine for babies. I was, at the beginning I was disagree, but nowadays, no, because it's easy, it's true, but if, you, if babies have really, really nice routine, strict routine, when they eat, sleep, and do all stuff during the day, they well behaved, so they but the, are so quite, the quite happy babies. So in terms of the parenting, I'm very strict, maybe too strict, and so I say soft, maybe too soft. <laughs> If we if we ask if we ask how many 24 year old gay guys are out there who have kids, I would probably say that you know, maybe Sasa, you are the only one. Most of the people you will find they will be mainly in the 30s or even in the 40s. I don't really miss the, the lifestyle I had before. I wanted to have kids for such a long time, and also I parted so much in my 20s and 30s that. After a point, it becomes boring. To me, definitely. I mean, I'm enjoying the, being a parent and the kids because they give something new to my life with much more meaning. But even if I say somebody, I have two kids, two daughters, like everybody, like in shock. Really? <laughs> like nobody can believe it. No, nobody believe me. Nobody. Just everybody. Uh, I show pictures for people. Can you see pictures? Like no, it's not yours. <laughs> Because come, you can be like, oh, you're 25 and you have kids. <laughs> and you're gay? Yeah. <laughs> Co-parenting with a friend is a popular option, one which TV actor Charlie Condu and his partner Cameron opted for. Well, in our family, there are many of us. There's me and Cameron and the two kids, Hal and Georgia, and also Catherine, their mum. We co-parent with Catherine. It was an arrangement we came up with a few years ago. Um, she was single, approaching 40, really wanted to be a mum. We really wanted to be dads. So we sort of had a, a serious conversation about it and, and um, decided to go down that route of co-parenting. And, and several years later, we've got two kids. I always found it interesting that people kind of feel like they have the right to ask all sorts of really personal questions. Um, they wanted to know how we did it, or whether, whether Catherine and I had actually slept together, all those kind of things that I was always surprised that people thought they had the right to even ask those questions. I used to be married, so I, I mean straight and married, and then got a divorce and gradually came out. So I sort of thought that I'd left the whole family thing behind until Charlie suggested it. And, and I don't think we did ever consider a different way because it, it really was born out of a conversation with Catherine. There are a lot of small things that we might disagree on, but, but 
the big things I think the three of us sort of stand together really. We, we did a lot of talking before the kids came along and we really did talk about every eventuality and we discussed so many things and whether we wanted to make sure that we were on the same page with many things about bringing up kids and also morally and politically we wanted to make sure that nothing was going to come up that that was a big issue and so yeah obviously there are small things too many sweets or that that kind of stuff that you know we might disagree on but basically we, we sort of we stand as one Vicky and Katie from Kent are another couple who opted to involve a close friend. I'm Katie. I'm Vicky. And this is Toby. And we're the Ludlows. We've been together for about seven years now. Yes, yeah, um, the longest one night we've stand ever, wasn't it? Yeah. The, we got married after two years. One, two, three. We talked about children and I said, look, now I want to start moving on and have your baby. We chose my closest friend, Wesley, he was also gay, and uh, said, would you donate sperm for us to have a family? And kind of went from there. I think the process of like trying for the baby was, um, and it's something difficult talking to Wes about as well, of what he was going to do. He was tested first, obviously to make sure everything was OK, but it was all done here, in the comfort of our own home. We set the ground rules for the whole process. And so really it was just Wes had to do what he had to do. And Ladies, I've done it. <laughs> yeah, that was that. I've done and, uh, it. But it was a case of like running it into the bedroom and uh, grin and bearing it. And um, Oh, it doesn't sound too of... good now, does it? Really? No, it sounds horrible. No, that we never contracted we, anything, we didn't to contract. be There was no written contract. It was all yeah. done quite with the ease. And... There was nothing done through It was really friendly, wasn't clinics it? Clinics and, really yeah. friendly. There's just three people that was involved making a baby. Nino, 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 look, one out. And we tried three times. No, twice. No, three times. It was two months, though, wasn't it? Okay. There's two ovulations. Okay. Vicky knows her circle one and I do, obviously. <laughs> Gave up for about eight months, didn't we? And then tried again. Toby was born September 26, 2010, and it's been a roller coaster ever since. During the pregnancy, Vicky and Katie did experience some homophobia. When mm. Vicky found out she was pregnant, we obviously had to go and confirm this at the, the GP, and we were so excited. And when he found out me and the father didn't actually have sex, and I wasn't with him, and I was with Katie, completely changed pretty Lost much the interest, conversation. Didn't wouldn't and look at me, yeah, just kept focusing on Vicky. Wouldn't even look at me, and I think we walked out as if we were deflated. We was all on a high, and then it was like, Ugh. yeah, okay. felt a little bit dirty as to what we had done. <laughs> when we told my mother about Vicky uh, having a baby, the comments that we received from her were, were quite bad, that two gays making another gay baby, so that was quite harsh for us when yes. we were going through our fantastic phase, not to have the only support of your own family, that was really hard, so that was probably the worst bit of homophobic abuse that we've had. Yeah, because it hurts people from people you love, it doesn't hurt from random and some straight. Legally, I am Toby's guardian. I am on his birth certificate um, in a box above Vicky that says parents. We thought about, all right, it's nice to have two parents, but what about if the child wanted to know who their real dad was? And the other thing is denying a child of a man. Yeah. You know, everyone should have a dad, no matter what their parents are like. Everyone deserves a mother and a father. That was the, the main reason why we sort of chose to know the donor. When you go to so, a sperm bank, you don't really know what you're going to yeah. do, you? But co-parenting isn't the right decision for every couple. I'm Becky. I'm Lily. This is Eris and this is Luna. And we're the Harwood Millers. I've been together seven years and I think we pretty much knew quite early on that we wanted kids I think. We found it really difficult we struggled with it because you know there wasn't much information out there. We were a bit sort of naive we didn't really know. Yeah we didn't know the process with the clinic. And they, they should have been prepared I think for questions from people like us because rather naively when we went in in the beginning we sort of said, can we have my egg implanted in Becky? <laughs> and they 
when they looked at us and said, no, that's not ethically sound, you can't do that. In relation to the donor, we knew a guy, Becky's known him for years, really nice guy. He was really nice and he wanted to help us out and we thought, yeah, this is good, you know, let's do it. But then pretty soon after that, it started to sort of Unravel. Not come apart. Yeah, come apart because there's so many things you've got to think about when there's a third person involved. We just started arguing about lots of things about, you know, where, whether he would be involved in the child's life, you know, what's, how's this actually going to work? There's three of us. And I, kept, I remember saying to you, I don't want there to be three people. I don't want there to be three parents. I just want two parents. You know, we just decided. She said it's going to be yours and his baby. It's not going to be ours. Mm. Um, and that did create quite a lot of friction. We decided that co-parenting just wasn't really for us. <laughs> so we decided that we'd get a donor via the clinic. The next month I went in for IUI. That wasn't successful the first time, but then the month after that I, I got pregnant with Eris. We've experienced no homophobia whatsoever. No, I, I think the only thing that, that's been said was that a distant relative had heard that I was pregnant and said, oh, you know, don't you think it's cruel? Yes, that's right. Um, I can't believe she said that. Two years later, it was time to try again. When I was pregnant with Eris, um, we decided to, in essence, bought some, <laughs> some sperm um, and basically just kept that on ice until we decided to, to try again. Donors aren't anonymous anymore. So there is a potential when our kids are 18, they can look them up on a, a register, I think it is, a sort of a central database. Of course it's an issue because in our, I mean, in an ideal world I don't think we'd want our kids to contact the donor. We've just got to, just got to cross that bridge and not, I don't, I'm not worried about it too much, are you? No, I, I, I don't think I'm really concerned about it. And if they do want to look for the donor then that's entirely up to them, but I have the belief that if they've got two strong parents and, and the, they'll have male role models as well, um, I don't think they would probably feel like they were missing out. It's, it's not really an issue for me. Well, we're a charity and we work with anybody who wants to adopt and foster. And for the last two or three years, we've been actively recruiting lesbian and gay adopters and foster carers. So how long have you guys been together? Uh, nearly three years. Three years, so you feel that the time's right for you to be thinking about a family? I've, I've always been, felt passionate about adoption, but my impression is it's a very long process, so yeah. that's why Sure. The information now because it is a long process. Yeah. Maybe now's the time to yeah. start looking. Well, the time for you to be prepared and approved as suitable shouldn't vary too much, so that should be the six months. And at the moment, about 95% of the families we're working with have a child within about a year to 18 months of starting the process. So it's not that much longer than a pregnancy, to be honest. Yeah. You are likely to need some kind of formal childcare experience, so my advice to you would be to try and go and get that before you start the process. Adoption was the first choice for American Dad Rob and his partner Matt. I'm Rob, Dad number one. I'm Corey, I'm age eight. I'm Addy and I'm seven. And we are the Gregson family. Rob and Matt adopted in the U.S. state of New Jersey and are now settled in London. Matt travels extensively for work, leaving Rob in charge at home. When Matt and I decided to create a family, we thought about a whole variety of ways we might do that. Surrogacy never really came up for us. And instead of doing private adoption, we decided to go to the foster to adopt process. So we spent a couple years with training and research and being interviewed and you had to go through a whole social care agency process. And then we, we ended up getting Corey. Just over a year later, Rob and Matt adopted Corey's sister, Addie. Corey and Addie have the same birth mother. It's a somewhat sad story in that the birth mother was never able to keep any of her children that she gave birth to for a variety of reasons. But the positive side of that tragedy is that we have this lovely family and we're so blessed. I do more of the day-to-day -day care, so I think the kids are more used to me being the reel in and wipe off with wipes and then reel out again. Um, 
but uh, we're both very hands-on parents. Yeah, Matt's a very good dad. We were also open to adopting across racial boundaries. We went through a lot of training on transracial adoption and realizing one of the great outcomes of that is that you become, in a way, a black family. And I welcome that. We're quite, quite proud of our, our black family. We've lived here three years now. One of the biggest differences that I've noticed living in the UK is um, there are just not many gay lesbian families here. They are here, and I belong to various organizations trying to connect with different families that look like ours. But what we've discovered in London, somewhat surprisingly, is that uh, while there are plenty of gay dads, most of them have had children from former heterosexual relationships. I think as a gay person, and as certainly as gay families, we're still somewhat invisible. And, and also there still is a great deal of shame, even still here in Britain. People have been generally very kind and understanding, but I think it has been a bit of a shock, especially at school. We are the first gay family they've ever met. Um, and certainly then the transracial piece is another part of that. Mostly I drop Addie off at school. More than once, my daughter has said, can you leave me here? I'm gonna go the rest of the way. We've tried to be sensitive to that, but also try to push her a little bit and say, well, you know, it's nothing to be ashamed of. You do have two dads. Maybe we're the only two dads in the school, we don't know. But, you know, this is your family, and it's important to be proud of family. Every once in a while, the kids will say something about a remark or bullying that my antenna go up with. So it's sometimes hard to tell exactly what brings it on. So I think he, I'm beginning to sense a bit of a pullback. There's some boys in my school who just laugh, so I don't tell them. I call my dad daddy, sometimes Rob, and I call my other dad dada, and sometimes Matt. I think my kids do a really good job of negotiating the different worlds that they live in. So they are adopted, they are African American, and they have two dads. I like it a lot, I have two dads, it's very nice. It's not different, well it's kind of different having two dads, but I still like it. Yeah, we've spoken to quite a lot of people today about different things, surrogacy, co-parenting, adoption, fostering. There's a lot of questions, but there's a lot of options as well, and, and I think we've learned that as, as guys, there, there's, we've got more challenges, but there's also a lot of different avenues we can go down. If you're in a same-sex relationship and wish to become parents, many people believe that they are in a different legal situation than, than a heterosexual couple. The answer is they are not. Um, the law now does not discriminate, but they need to take advice at an early stage. Today everyone was really positive who we spoke to and I think that there isn't as much stigma as we thought there Especially was. Especially with, with adoption, I think that they, they finally now it's the needs of the child mm. rather than you know, people's morality around same-sex parents. They recognise that children need homes and, and loving families and it doesn't mm. matter who the parents are, whether that's same-sex couples or, or single people actually. I think our future definitely involves a family no matter how we get there. Mm. With gay parents increasing in numbers, LGBT events are springing up to help bring families together. Gay Family Pride takes place over a weekend in the English countryside. The event was founded by Natalie and Ashling, who have two children of their own. We've started Family Pride because as our children were getting older, um, and they were at school, they were starting to ask more questions um, about why they had two mummies and why other children had a mum and a dad and we just thought it'd be nice to set up an event where they could meet other children whose families were similar to theirs. As soon as we got together I said to Ash, just so you know, I want children and uh, you're yeah. either on board or you're not, but I'm definitely going to do it. There was a clinic down in London, there was lots of private clinics that were kind of really expensive and a bit out of our price range. So we did a bit more research, a company started up that matched what we were looking for, and so we went with them. 
we started planning for Gia. And that's we looked at clinics where you, you basically you just get a sample and that's it and you don't know anything above kind of how tall they are, what colour hair and what colour eyes they've got but it, it didn't feel right for me to do it that way. We were really quite particular about what we wanted. We wanted we wanted to know the donor, we wanted the children to know the donor, but we didn't want them to have any parental access or parental rights. It was just us to do the parenting, but them to be known. And when we met Ben, who we ended up using, we just kind of clicked and it was nice. Yeah, Ben's, um, we get on really well. We, when Ash was trying, when we tried for Kai, um, it took Ash a little while longer to catch. So we got to spend every month doing the inseminations and obviously Gia got to spend time with him then and you know a bond grew between them. My daddy, he's really kind because every time we see him, he gets us presents. When I go to other people's houses, normally they have a mum and a dad. And I think it's okay to have a mum and a dad, but I think it's better to have two mums and one dad. We've always been really open with, with Gia. Just said that, you know, mummies love each other, but we couldn't have you without Daddy Ben's help. So Daddy Ben said that he'd help us so that we could have you. And she was, she's always been quite accepting of, of that. It's good that they, they get on with him and that we've got this nice three-way relationship, really, where, yeah. where he, can, he can dip in when it suits him. Um, and obviously, I mean, we're always flexible anyway, because we think it's really important for the kids to have a, have a relationship with him. Since we publicly came out, uh, it's it made more women come up to us that weren't out at school and just say, by the way, we're, we're, we're a gay family. And it, it, it just made me think then that there's lots of us out there really, but it's just how many of us are completely out and open. I've never found it easy at the school to be sort of completely open as a gay parent. So Nat will always hold my hand walking down the street, even outside the school, and I find that quite difficult. I don't know why, but for me it's quite hard, but I think it's really important that gay families do just stand up and say there's nothing different about us, we're the same as you. We have the same routines as everyone else. And I think the more families feel able to stand up and say we're a gay family and this is who we are and there's nothing wrong with us, then kind of the easier it will be on all families that are going to come through in the future. I think gay families need specific support around knowing that they're not alone and I think one of the things we're seeing from gay parents is much greater um, confidence to say this is my family and I think probably in the past we've seen gay parents hide that status and not talk about it. And gay families are becoming more visible to big companies such as Royal Bank of Scotland, sponsors of a new London event, Out With The Family. So RBS we get involved in numerous different things to support LGBT communities. LGBT issues are really important to us. It's one of those things that I think has been shied away from in the past, but no more. I think it's natural for some people to be suspicious about big companies like RBS really embracing gay issues and things like that. And the only way I can really answer that and, and how we deal with that is it's absolutely authentic and genuine. And nursery brands such as Mamas and Papas have recognized the value of the pink family pound. Their ad campaign, How We Roll, was groundbreaking in celebrating modern parenting. Although the actual amount of gay parents is quite small as a percentage of the overall number of parents in Britain, uh, it's an important and growing part of the marketplace. And as a company that wants to be in, in touch with modern parents, it's really important we recognise all the very different shades of parenting. And because we're a family business, we recognise that families are so important. So we are going to be behind and supportive of any different sort of family that gives a child a loving, nurturing, warm, supporting home. It's all a far cry from when actress Sophie Ward came out. My experience of bringing up my young children was from a long time ago and I think I'm hoping things have changed. I was married to a man and I had two children with him and then when I was in my early 30s, I fell in love with a woman and we got together. We raised our children um, and 
my ex-husband was involved in their life, so we, we co-parented, and that was 17 years ago. Obviously there are more precedents now, and there is more structure, and I think there's more recognisability of gay families as a rising phenomenon. Now it's more out there, there are more families to read about, and there's more structures and events that people can go to. So I'm hoping things are better. I know that there is still, of course, bullying and homophobia and, and individual children um, and families might come across problems, um, but I'm hoping that there's more support for those families and that um, the fact that we are in a position where legally we're recognised the same as heterosexual families will make a big difference. Gay dad Mike has travelled over 100 miles from his home in Walsall to bring his two girls to today's event. I'm a gay dad. I've got two daughters uh, from when I was married um, and I've been out for just over two years now. As far as other gay dads, I don't really know many. It's one or two um, and not within my local social circle. Uh, we've got lesbian friends with, with kids but there isn't many gay dads around by me. I think days like today and other LGBT family events are important because it allows my daughters to mix with other children who are in a similar situation with having gay parents. Since my dad told me I was gay, he's been happier and he's been like going out more, meeting new people as well. I have a gay family and I'm proud of it and I don't care what people say. It's just it's just like an, another ordinary family. Just like with a slight difference. So the Out With The Family event has just been fantastic. We're so delighted. There has been such interest in, in this event and we hope it'll be the first of many that will continue to raise awareness around gay family issues that in the future will just disappear. Being a gay family in the UK um, is getting a lot better. When I look at the younger generation coming through, they're much more accepting and they see being a gay family as all part of regular society and it makes me feel very positive about the future. <laughs>